I can hear monkeys for sure. Show yourself, you gutless cowards. Hey, go. I'm the Jaunting Ape, and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a day in the life at Hua Hin. We're gonna start by going to the pier for sunrise, checking out Pranberry National Park, followed by a trip to Prianakan Cave. After that, we're gonna go and check out the night market and see what's there to eat. And for the grand finale, we're gonna check out some of the nightlife. So sit down and get comfortable and join me on today's mission. I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. I might even squeeze in a massage or two. Joke's on you, I'm already awake. And I've been awake for hours. Could be the excitement of just getting into Thailand or maybe it's the jet lag. But in any case, I'm pretty ready to get on with my day. So it's five o'clock in the morning and I'm just packing for my day. I've got a taxi book to uh, a mangrove forest and uh, a cave. So I'll be heading out to do that, but first I'm going to go watch the sunrise at the pier. Hua Hin Pier. Yeah, I'm packed up for the day, so let's go for a walk. Just a bunch of early risers here in Hua Hin. Everybody's got somewhere to be. This is where they set up for the night market at night, which I will come to see after my big day. Looking at caves. Morning. Morning. So from where I'm staying, it's uh, about 300 meters to the pier. Uh, short walk. Sun's coming up. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunrise. I'm a little bit late. I have no excuse. I'm hoping the fishermen are gonna let me watch them and help them. I love the fish. Google Maps tells you to go that way, but you have to go this way to get to the pier. I came here yesterday and that's what I figured out. It's all fenced along here. You won't be able to get in the other way. And here's the friendly doggos of the pier. He's a good boy. You're a good boy. As the sun is coming up, these fishermen are emerging from the shadows. And they're tossing out these little nets and they're catching bait fish. And these bait fish they're bringing over to other fishermen to sell as bait so that they can catch bigger fish and then in turn sell them to the market. Pretty cool. It's good. Drinking beer. <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> Oh, you dropped the rope. My van. Rest in peace, my fine feathered friend. More fishermen coming means more dead fish. And these fishermen actually aren't men at all. And these little guys, they don't even need nets. Another common sight you see in the mornings in Thailand is people get up early and they pick up garbage. And while this is going on, there's always dogs playing or fighting in the background. You can't miss it, it's, it happens every morning. Is that how you're gonna sit? So I had to ask a few questions about these little boats that come in first thing in the morning and I guess they're squid fishermen and they bridge the gap between the squid swimming around the ocean to swimming around in my belly at the night market. Once they get back to shore here they're going to unload this squid and ship them on ice. I guess I should find something to eat. I'm going to go to one of these little pork stations. So what the crap? How right? How about? Five Um... Three? 
Really? Yeah, please. And stick right? Yeah. This. Oh, just the meat. Just, yeah, just pork. Uh, four. Four. Four? Four of these, yeah. Four. Four. And stick right? No? No, no, thank you. Okay. I see yesterday you photo. <laughs> you saw me? <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Put the stick. Uh, this is okay. Yep, it's okay. Cup going crop. Yeah. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you. I come back. <laughs> hey there, I got my little breakfast here for about uh, 60 cents. That's pretty good. 60 cents for my little porks. That's pretty good price for breakfast. And it's so good. It's fresh. It's cheap. It's amazing. It's way better than the other world. And it's good for you. If I could have 60 cent breakfast every day, I could save a lot of monies. And I can here. Which is why I like to be here. Now that I've got a full belly, I can go back to my hotel and see about meeting that taxi. Probably stop by 7-Eleven and grab some, some Red Bulls, some water for the day. Taxi driver's supposed to meet me at 9 o'clock. We're getting close to 9 o'clock, so best be heading back. Across the street without getting hit and killed. I guess getting hit by an ambulance wouldn't be so bad follow them they know what they're doing and into the market oh boy it's pretty good in here oh uh, before my cab driver picks me up I'm gonna drop off my my laundry somewhere very cheap to do laundry in Thailand and nobody really does their own that I've seen for travelers. Now about 25 steps out my door and I see a laundry sign already. But I don't know what it means. Morning! Laundry. laundry. Yes. You need to pick up evening tomorrow. Tomorrow evening? Tomorrow evening. Uh, what time tomorrow? Maybe. 4 p.m., 5 p.m. after you. Okay. Tomorrow, yeah. not, not today. Tomorrow, it's okay. Okay. Mr. My name? Yes. Matt. M A T T, Matt. Okay. Yeah, I'm just at Band Montana right here. Montana. Yeah, close. Okay. Room 211. You, Rolly. You know, later. Rally. No, no, Iron. No, Iron, no. Okay. It's okay. Okay, I'll come back tomorrow. Yes. Cup and cup. That was super duper easy. 14 hours later. Oh, the dragon. So here's what happened to me last night. I had too many Sang Soms and Colas, too many big Chong beers, and I didn't get to the laundry place till quarter to six, 5.30, 5.45. He did say five but he wasn't here. So I left it for the night. I called him the next morning and they said, Sunday, we closed. And I got my laundry. However, I did have to stay in Hua Hin for one more night, which is okay. After dropping off my laundry, my cab driver met me as planned and we headed out to the mangrove. It was only about a 10 minute drive from the city center of Hua Hin. And we didn't have to deal with any crazy traffic like I do in Bangkok. This little mangrove forest, full of crabs. Crabs everywhere. It's quite a nice little place. After only about 20 minutes into my hike, I came across this little dock where they were doing boat tours. Now I fell into the one to four people category, so the price for me was 450 baht, which I was happy to pay for my own boat. Came with my own driver who had his face painted white, which was a little bit scary for me, but uh, I got over it quick. I just didn't look at him too much. He fired up the long tail motor and away we went. 
Now for the price of 450 baht, this was a pretty cool little tour to have a boat all to myself. There was all kinds of wildlife to see along the way. Look at this little bird, he's gonna hop. This bridge, I thought somebody was taking a leak off of it, but it was just the rain, I think. There was even some boats that were sunken ships, and this little king of the sunken ship cormorant looking thing, little beautiful little guy. I actually have no idea where I'm being taken to. But that doesn't matter. Pretty hard to be lost if you got nowhere to go. Howdy! There's the boat tour. 450 baht, 45 minutes, an hour maybe it was. Take you down the river and out to the port. A bunch of boats. We're all getting prepared to go out fishing for the day. And uh, there was a bunch of fishermen and kids playing by the river. Pretty cool. Pretty nice tour. 450 baht gets you the whole boat. Um, one of the downsides of solo traveling is uh, you travel alone, so you have to pay for the whole boat. But that's okay, because it's nice and quiet. It's about a 10 minute taxi ride from the city center, Hua Hin. I got a taxi. Took me for the day, it's a uh, price is 1900 baht. And he's gonna drive me to here and to some other caves later. And I, I pretty much get the cab for all day for 1900. Super nice little mangrove. Tons of little crabs. There's a big one. Big one, big one. So I told my, or my taxi driver told me I had one hour. That boat trip was one hour plus his height, so hopefully he's still there when I get back. Little Tong, he seemed like a pretty good guy. I don't think he's gonna leave me. Tong's a good driver. He's a real good driver. He likes to wait. He's probably having a little sleep. Just gonna watch where I'm going here. I don't step in any holes. There's a Definitely some rotten boards. Now the next stop is Praia Nakon Cave, I think is what, how you say it, Praia Nakon Cave. Looks really, really nice. Uh, from what I've been reading, it's a big hike to get to the cave. Or you can take a boat. We'll uh, see what it looks like when I get there, but I'm up for a good hike. I got all the water I need and Red Bulls too. Red Bulls make you big and strong. You're alive, that's perfect. So they tell me it's uh, two kilometers, takes an hour and a half one way to make this hike. Or I could take a boat, but I didn't want to take a boat, I wanted to walk. As you opt for the past less traveled for going the convenience of the boat, the enchanting melodies of exotic birds and the rustling leaves of ancient trees become your companions. The trail adorned with vibrant flora leads you deeper into the heart of the wilderness, where the scent of blooming flowers and the earthy aroma of the forest floor mingle in the air. The rhythmic symphony of your footsteps blends with the distant murmur of a hidden stream, inviting you to explore the secrets of the untamed terrain. The decision to forego the boat transformed the hike into a sensory adventure, where the texture of the terrain beneath your feet and the cool breeze whispering through the foliage becomes integral parts of the narrative. This choice isn't merely a deviation, it's an embrace of the raw, unfiltered beauty that unfolds with each stride, making the journey to pry in a concave not just a physical expedition, but a soul-stirring communion with nature's untouched splendor.
and I guess that's the bottom of the, the hill. Nice little message here too. Your health is still strong. Sure is. A little bit stronger now that I made that hike. If that was the hard part, really not so bad. I don't think it's worth the 300 or 400 baht to take a boat. It's kind of a nice hike, but you have to have good shoes on. If I had sandals on, I'd be munsoned on the side of the trail, probably. So if you're gonna come here, bring your hikers and climb the mountain. The pathway is super well groomed. They must must have just raked it this morning. There's no footprints on it. And all these coconut trees, I sure hope somebody's gonna sell me a nice cold coconut water. I would love that. I guess it's this way. Okay. Six hundred and twenty five meters more. If this was a wishing well, I definitely would have wished for more wishes. But I think it was just a regular old well, not much to it. And this part here is me thinking, boy, this is gonna be easy to get to this cave. I was wrong. She is one steep hike up there. And you do it one step at a time. The pathway had pretty good infrastructure. It looks like it's been well maintained and it wasn't too horrible, but you still need to have good footwear. As I kept descending the hill, I could hear all kinds of weird noises in the trees and I wasn't quite sure what it was until all of a sudden I, I knew what it was and I didn't like it. I would have been too tired to fight back had they come for me. I can hear monkeys for sure. The dusky langer. Where the devil are you monkeys? Show yourself you gutless cowards. Oh, I see you. Deep down inside, I knew that these monkeys were practicing their MMA or monkey martial arts, just waiting for somebody like me to come along so they could unleash their fury. There's even cell service up here in case you need to get a hold of Mr. Amnet or Mr. Suit. I call Mr. Suit. Oh, so we still got a hundred meters to go. Look. It's so humid out, good thing the sun's not out. But yeah, this last 600 meters is it's tough. But it feels good. You were right. You gotta be in good health. There's this awful noise. Sounds like a horrible bug. Huh, my very least favorite kind of waterfall. Too bad. amazing. I'm the only one here. I look at me sweating here. Nuts. This is an incredible view. Look at that. Wow. I'm a little bit afraid of the monkeys. I can hear them. But this is one of the coolest caves I've ever seen for sure. Worth the hike. I think there's more to it till still. Wow.
Reaching the culmination of the Priyanakon cave hike is an indescribable triumph, an exquisite blend of exhaustion and elation. As you emerge from the dense foliage, the cave's majestic facade materializes. Your wearied muscles resonate with the challenging ascent, yet a profound sense of accomplishment courses through your veins. The distant echoes of the jungle are replaced by a serene hush, and the rhythmic crashing of the waves against the nearby shore becomes a soothing lullaby. As you step into the vast cavern, the temperature drops and the air carries a mystical aura. And then, at precisely 11 a.m., a celestial spectacle unfolds. The sun, positioned perfectly in the sky, bathes the temple in an ethereal glow, a radiant beam piercing through the cave ceiling to spotlight the ancient sanctuary below. It's a moment frozen in time, a dance between sunlight and shadow, accentuating the intricate details of the temple's architecture and revealing its timeless grandeur. Standing before the illuminated temple, you realize that every step, every drop of sweat, was a currency spent to witness this natural spectacle. In that moment, the fusion of exhaustion and exhilaration becomes a celebration of resilience, a communion with the sublime, as you bask in the radiant culmination of your Priya Nakhon Odyssey. Absolutely amazing. Well, that was a pretty intense climb. I give it maybe like a seven out of 10 but I'm in pretty bad shape, so it's like nine out of 10 for me. Uh, looking forward to that little restaurant over there. I sure hope they have a cold coconut water for me. It's gonna taste good. They had it. And this is gonna be delicious. I got one. One last jaunt over the little mountain and then I'll be back. And I just gotta find my driver. I don't even know his name. I know his boss's name. See you next time. I just had a stupendous nap and um, well needed, much needed after the mountain climbing I was doing today and uh, can't see it from here maybe but I'm gonna head down to the night market it's uh, really close to my hotel like half a block away so I'm gonna go eat supper there see what kind of good things they've got for me there
here's my hotel and uh, the market's right there pretty nifty So thanks for joining in on my day adventure in Hua Hin. I'm off to Keo Sok National Park next, so join me on my adventure there. It's going to be another week or so before I get a video up for that one, but um, stay tuned. I'm the Jaunting Ape, and the world is yours. <laughs>